Father, I thank you, uh, God, for your word again. I thank you, Lord, that um, Lord, we can trust these. These are not mythology or um, just stories, Lord, but this is uh, your word given to us, how you wanted it to be uh, written down and, and, and transferred and translated and uh, for the purpose of changing us. And so, God, I pray, Lord, that you would uh, give us wisdom as we open it up tonight, Lord. And, and I just pray, Lord, that you would help me to not be in your way. And, God, I pray that for each of us, that you would allow us to hear what it is you would have to say out of this. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so, um, hello, Father. So, uh, <laughs> shout out to the crowd, sorry. Um, interesting, I was just going to re reread the the uh, life lessons from last week real quick, and also wanted to just, before we dive into this week, which we're going we're gonna to start basically at verse 21, um, life lessons from that last week were... Um, Number one, God has called us as men, as leaders, to lead our people, not to be dragged along by the world, unwilling to serve Jesus, and not do the right thing because we are comfortable in our circumstances. God has called us as men, as leaders, to lead our people, not to be dragged along by the world, unwilling to serve Jesus, and not do the right thing because we are comfortable in our circumstances. The second one was, give God the glory. Do not pat yourself on the back when someone responds to the call of serving Jesus. Uh, third one was, leading is rarely about knowing where you're going or how you're going to get there. It is often humbling yourself and encourage, encouraging others to do the same and then following wherever he may lead. All right, the Nethanim. Who are the Nethanim? I think I think you mentioned some about about them. Um, and I, I don't. So you may have already mentioned this. I just got to thinking about them and looking and just interesting. From from a, uh, we don't know a ton about them. We know they were used for service in in the temple. They they, they were basically the servants of the Levites. Who they were traditionally, and, and um, let me grab that real quick, Joshua. Um, we, we don't know this for sure, but it seems to line up scripturally. But traditionally, uh, they're thought to be the Gibeonites. And if you remember the story of the Gibeonites, um, the narrative, excuse me, the uh, record of the Gibeonites uh, and, and how uh, they were not destroyed when they were supposed to have been destroyed. 9, 16 through, there we go. And it happened at the end of three days after they had made a covenant with them that they heard that they were their neighbors who dwelt there. Then the children of Israel journeyed and came to their cities on a third day. Now, now their cities were Gibeon, uh, Chafira, Biroth, Kirjath, Jerim, but the children of Israel did not attack them because the rulers of the congregation had sworn to them by the Lord God of Israel, and all the congregation complained against the rulers. If you remember, Israel was coming throughout the land, destroying people, and these guys put on old raggedy clothes, old wineskins, and oh, they had moldy, yeah, they had moldy bread, and hey, you know, we're just travelers from far away make a treaty with us they made a treaty with them um and, and so this goes down to and basically the end of that is is that okay well since we since we gave you our word and this is taking giving your word to a far extent because it was word was given under a false pretense you know in our culture that would be well forget that you 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 brought a false pretense into this no word no word holds but these in this context, their word mattered. And so it comes down to 21. And the ruler said to them, Let them live, but let them be woodcutters and water carriers for all the congregations 
as the rulers had promised them. And so down to 23, Now therefore you are cursed, and none of you shall be freed from being slaves, woodcutters and water carriers, for the house of my God. And so this is kind of traditionally who they believe became what we call, the, what, not, what the scriptures call the Nethanim. Um, and it, you know, from a, from a Talmudic pers- perspective, they were very much, the Nethanim were very negatively thought of, very denigrated. They, A, they were, they were not Israeli. They were, they were, uh, um, Goy, or, uh, why am I, Gentiles, Gentiles, sorry, they were Gentiles. Uh, what's happened to them since? New Testament didn't, doesn't mention anything about them. Uh, best, best we know is they kind of just kind of faded into the larger group of, of Israel uh, as, as time went on. But anyway, I thought that was interesting. That's who they were. Um, verse 21. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Havaya, Hava, uh, Hava, and they that we might humble ourselves before our God to seek him, to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. For I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road because we had spoken to the king saying, the hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him, but his power and his wrath are against all those who forsake him. So we fasted and entreated our God for this. And he answered, our prayers. Um, thinking about this, putting yourself in that context of what's going on here, it would not just have been the king and the Israelites um, coming out of captivity that knew about this millions and millions of dollars worth of treasure that they were sending with them on the road. Just like we have leaks in our government all over, I guarantee you there were leaks in their government. And, and it got out on the street, word got on the street, that these guys are carrying a ton of money. Literally tons of money. And so you, you think of what, what you know, every once in a while, I mean, I, I don't carry much cash, but every once in a while I have a big wad of cash. And, it, and it's, it's a weird how much your mind thinks about make sure I make it to the bank all right you know what I mean for <laughs> maybe I'm alone in that but you know when you when you're bar- carrying a big wad of cash that then is like right here on your holy moly you know why we think it's safer in the bank I'm not sure but <laughs> but that's a different that's a story for another day but the reality is they've been handed this huge huge amount of treasure go ahead go walk on down the road for a long way on the highways and the byways and and we know there's there's uh, a lot of people out there who know they're carrying all this, and uh, they begin. I think it begins to think in sink in a little bit that they made this bold proclamation. You know, God's got us. I'm not worried about anything. He's he'll knock out all those bad guys, but we're the good guys, right? So, so and 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 the fact is here is that. Again, like I said last week, we, we don't know. Did, did, he, did he receive a word from the Lord? And he knew that God had planned. We, didn't, we aren't given that, that he received a word from the Lord, a specific word from the Lord. But, but we kind of get, and it, I'm, my thinking is, is that because all of a sudden he's now like, ooh, <laughs> let's fast. Now, now he's got this big treasure. Now he's got this big bait for the rest of the evil of the world. Now that starts to sink in of, oh, wow, is God really going to do this? Am I really going to have the faith? To, so to his credit, what does he do? He doesn't, he doesn't, he recognized, well, I, I can't, I can't make the Lord look bad in this. I'm not going to knock him. So instead he says, well, all right, guys, let's pray. Let's fast. Let's see what the Lord's going to do. Let's, let, let's seek him. Let's humble ourselves and seek him he had spoken so boldly and i think life less life lesson here is 
we should be more concerned about the glory of God than even our own well-being. And that, that's that's tough. <laughs> let's be let's be real. That's tough. Some, sometimes it is really tough to to you know what I said I blah, 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 I said this thing. Um, rather than rather than go against the Lord in that moment seek him even if it might take take some pain on you take some pain on your own back and that's you know it, it, that's a i think one of those things for me personally i like to be thought of let me put it this way i like to be thought of as helpful i like to be thought of as you know giving i like to be thought of as you know just being transparent here i like to be i like people to think those things of me I try to be those things too, but but often my mouth gets in front of the amount of time I have to do something, or my mouth gets in front of my capability to to carry out what I said I would do, or my mouth gets in front of the reality I have a terrible memory, and if I told you I'm going to pray for you and walk away and didn't pray for you or didn't pray for you right now, it's a good chance that I may not pray for you, not because I have any malice and <laughs> I got away with it, but because my brain is Swiss cheese. So it's a, for me, it's, it's become a discipline of, if I, if I say, I'll, I'm praying for you, bro, something, guess what? I pray right there, right then. I may pray again later, but I pray right there or then. In the hallway, praying for somebody, I try to do the best I can to I'm pray for you. Let's pray for you right now. You know what I mean? And so, so but the point being is, is um, being careful with with what we what we are proclaiming that we are going to do it's god tells us uh, that our yes should be yes and our no should be me no and that's for me I, and i'm sure all of us that can be tough sometimes and because we we have that the feeling of wanting to be something maybe we aren't actually or or being able to carry out things or, or even being we want people to think a certain way about us when we really aren't that way and so that's part of the humbling of <laughs> we just need to be humbled sometimes and be truthful with what we say and, and, and think through the costs. If I'm going to say I can do this, what does that really mean? Uh, can I really do this? Can I really uh, complete what I'm what's what's coming out of my mouth? But that's not taken away from we need to tr- in, in this case. He, he laid he wrote a big check. And now he's, Lord, please cash this check. And, <laughs> right? I mean, that's, that's really what he, what he did. And so, and some, I'm not saying that's sometimes we're going to have to do. Lord, I, I, I said this thing, and it's going to hurt me to, to follow through with it. God, help me. God, help me to do what, what is right. Do what is good by you that gives you glory. Not necessarily good for me. I may take a, a whopping financially for this. I may take a whopping physically i may get no sleep for a night but god let me let me do things in such a way that you get the glory and i may be humbled (laughs) i mentioned here not a life lesson but you should know yourself know your limitations your weaknesses and honor god above your desire to be seen as kind helpful willing or whatever let your yes be yes and your no be no this is a uh you know, <laughs> I guess any time I, I teach, it's a um, it's a sermon to me first because I'm going, ow, e, <laughs> Lord, <laughs> give me something I can tell them. <laughs> this hurts me. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. So, so it's you know this is that's a, you know, um, yeah. We'll we'll leave it there for now. Let's go to verse. 24 real quick and I separated 12 of the leaders of the priests uh, Sherebiah, Hashabiah and 10 of their brethren with them and weighed out to them the silver the gold, the articles, the offerings for the house of our God which the king and his counselors and his princes and all Israel who were present had offered I weighed out, I weighed into their excuse me, hand 650 talents of silver, silver articles weighing 100 talents, 100 talents of gold, 20 
gold basins worth a thousand drachmas and two vessels of fine polished bronze, precious as gold. Thinking of that list, literally that's tons of gold. That's tons of silver. Today's price is astronomical how much this is worth. Think just from a physical standpoint. It had to be divided because A, one man couldn't carry it. Even these 22 men here couldn't carry it. It was They were, they were though, put in charge of. It's not like they were, well, strap it on, I'm walking all this way. You know, they were, they were put in charge, though, of me and my family. We are being stewards over this 20, I don't know how it was divided. We don't get that. But of this, you know, one twenty-second of this amount of stuff, I'm going to tote it. And I've, I've got to be fight my own flesh. Let me throw that coin in my pocket. Nobody would notice on the other side. It's just a lot. Look at all this. Nobody will notice. they gotta, they got to be trustworthy men, able to rule their own home, able to rule, make sure nobody around them snags some, able to uh, defend it. As far as we can tell from, from Scripture, in this Scripture, there is no um, payment for having done this. And I guarantee you this game this came at a great cost. They had to they had to, you know, probably pay for people to help protect it. They had to, their family was at greater risk because dangling this huge amount of money. I'm sure it leaked that these twenty two men were the ones that were carrying that money. So they knew where it was. So it's th- th- this was a great amount of risk, a great amount of responsibility, a great amount of burden handed to these guys. For a four-month journey, you know they would have been targets of all sorts of stuff, of, of, of ambush, of all sorts of things uh, along that road. Life lesson here. Sometimes we are required to carry a heavy burden for the Lord, for his people and for his house, and there will be no earthly reward. Sometimes we are required to carry a heavy burden for the Lord, his people and his house, and there will be no earthly reward. Now we know that his burden is light. In a spiritual sense, that burden is taken care of. But we also know that sometimes the work isn't always light, right? There's a lot to be done. And I know I've heard Tom say this many times. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if PD said it or where it came from, but talking about, you know, not that our work would be easier, but that our shoulders would be broader to carry it. Or rough, <laughs> rough translation of what Tom has said is it's, you know, there's a reality of, of there's a lot to do. There's a lot to be done. There's God didn't call us to be sitting around on the shelf doing nothing. He called us to be active, to be doing something. That, that's on top of whatever season of life you're in. I mean, there's, there's a, a reality. I'm in a, I'm in a really busy season of life as a, as a husband and a father. I've got, you know, two preteens and two teens, and that's, I thought when they were little you were busy. Holy moly, whole different level at this. So it's like, bah. however, I don't know how many times the temptation has been, I need to, I need to let somebody else do something. And there's, there's been a reality of some of that. But, it, but, but the enemy wants you to really set down all these things for the Lord and continue in doing things that are of not, not import. Man, I'm being way too transparent up here. We gotta stop that. <laughs> but there's a reality, guys, that, that we need to fight that desire um, to expect something when when God gives us something to do. To expect that there's I'm gonna get something good out of this here. That's a normal. We feel that way. Well, I mean, why would I be doing this? I'm getting something. You know, or, or or something something bad happens, and we look back. Look at all this stuff I did for you, God, and you're going to do this. I mean, that's I wish that wasn't something I've said. 
you know I wish but it is I've gotten angry at God look at all this stuff I did and you brought this thing <laughs> that's pointing at me that's not pointing at him sometimes we are required to carry a heavy burden for the Lord his people and his house and there will be no earthly reward but that re reward is coming that reward is coming Okay, and I said to them, you are holy to the Lord. The articles are also holy, and the silver and the gold are a free will offering. Watch and keep them until you weigh them before the leaders of the priests and the Levites and the heads of the fathers, houses of Israel, heads of the fathers, house of Israel in Jerusalem in the chambers of the house of the Lord. You and I have been given something very special from the Lord. Something much more valuable than this, right? Much more valuable. Infinitely. And we are holy. And it's not because of our goodness or, or how special we are. But we're holy because of who we are in Him and this thing that we've been set apart to do for him. We're set up. That's, whole, that's what holy means, right? Set apart. That's these 22 men were holy. They were just like Israel as, as a whole was holy. They were, they were set apart from the rest of the world, right? Divided to be his people. These 22 men were holy from Israel. They were set apart from Israel. Divided to do this holy thing, to carry these special free will offerings, this thing that was given freely. We have been given a light burden. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through, 20, th through 30. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul, souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. That's a more difficult verse than you might think at first. That's, that's a good coffee verse, my coffee cup verse. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. But when walking through real life, walking through the difficulties of life, that doesn't always seem, <laughs> that, that, that's hard to process sometimes. Wait, what do you mean it's light? What do you mean your yoke is easy? It seems really hard right now, Lord. But we have a light burden. We have a light burden because we, we can remember that the work is ultimately done. It's not reliant on us. To mm, 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 get it across the finish line. We are to be constantly uh, striving and serving the Lord. We are. But the work is done. It's not up and, oh, is he going to get this done? No. It's, think of, I'm trying to think of a, with my son sometimes, we'd be, We'd, carry, we'd be doing some chores outside, and we'll be carrying something heavy. And I'm in the middle of it carrying, you know, a huge, well, whatever it is. I'm not saying it's huge, but I'm carrying the load. My son's hanging on the back. We got this, Dad. You know, <laughs> I'm almost carrying him in the back. You know, <laughs> you know and that's what, that's what this life is like. If we remember that God's got this, you know, the work is done. We're the kid on the I'm helping you, right? And so it's, remember that. We, we, though for my son, that little bit that pushes down on him sometimes feel heavy, feels heavy. Our burden is small. Our burden is light. Our yoke is easy. His yoke is easy. We have been given a greater free will offering. If you look up here, it was, they were given a, 
a free will offering to carry. We also carry a free will offering. John 10, 18, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. This gospel that we get to carry to people was given freely by the king, just like this was given freely. This treasure was given freely by the king. The gospel was given freely by our king to take to people, to take, to use uh, for his people, to use for his glory, to use to see people brought to him, to use to see his church built. We have been given a job, though, Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. We have a task to do. We're holy and set apart because he chose us for this task. Is that an honor or is that a burden to you? It is an honor, but how do you carry that? <laughs> you, you carry it as a burden or you carry it as an honor? Do you re- remember that this is a special thing that he has given us this opportunity thank you for your mercy Lord verse 30 and 31 so the priests and the Levites received the silver and the gold and the articles by weight to bring them to Jerusalem to the house of our God Then we departed from the river of Ahava on the twelfth day of the first month to go to Jerusalem. And the hand of our God was upon us, and he delivered us from the hand of the enemy and from the ambush along the road. Verse 23, they stopped to humble themselves, pray, fast, knowing the danger. Verse 31, they departed, stepping out in faith, knowing the danger but trusting God. Verse 31, and the hand of God was upon us, and he delivered us. There's a reality to this in that there is a life full of temptation, ambushes, um, Enemies, people who really may may want to do you harm, literally, whether it's physically, financially, or something else. Um, there's a, an enemy, the enemy, who certainly desires to do you harm. So prepare your heart. Humble yourself. Pray fast. Take those steps of faith. I think sometimes... Speaking for myself, I'll run head in, headlong into a week, headlong into a big event, headlong into a something, and I haven't done enough of the preparing my heart, enough of the humbling myself, enough of the praying and fasting. I'm not saying I certainly do at times, but there's lo- lots of times, too many times, that I'm running through life, big event coming, not even thinking of it till that big event hits my front door. Lord, help me. And I really haven't prepared my heart, haven't humbled myself, so I'm ready to take credit. If there's any credit due, hey, I got that. Yep. I didn't pray. I didn't fast. I didn't, I didn't separate myself from my flesh for a time in fasting. I ripped it. <laughs> Man, that's the important of one of the 
important things of fasting is killing that flesh a little bit as it has our has our has a control over you in so many ways or can have control over you in so many ways is taking that bit of control and then walking in faith life lesson the hand of our God is upon you and he will deliver you the hand of our God is upon you and he will deliver you prepare your heart humble, humble yourself pray and fast and walk in faith. Verse 20, 32. So we came to Jerusalem and stayed there three days. On Now on the fourth day, the silver and the gold and the articles were weighed in the house of our God by the hand of Merimoth, the son of Uriah, and the priest. And with him was Eleazar, the son of Phineas. And with them were the Levites, Jehazabad, the son of Jeshua, and Noada, and the son of Benai. With the number and weight of everything, all the weight was written down at that time. So everything was delivered. The children of those who had been carried away, these guys had proven themselves to be good stewards. They had proven over a four-month tough journey with many, many dangers, with many temptations. They, they, were, they were good stewards. With the number and weight of everything, all the weight was written down at that time. The children of those who had been carried away captive, who had come from the captivity, offered burnt offerings to the God of Israel, 12 bulls for all Israel, 96 rams, 77 lambs, and 12 male goats as a sin offering. All this was a burnt offering to the Lord, delivered from captivity, delivered from danger, completing the task of a long burden. And what did they do? They came in and they offered a sweet aroma to the Lord, a burnt offering, a large burnt offering. Um, the burnt offering tended to be a, this was, this was not like you throwing something on the grill and you get to eat part of it. This was, this was completely burnt to ashes. All these supplies that they had in these animals was lost to them. This was a real sacrifice. It, it's not like going to Walmart pick up some more meat. This is this was lost to them, and they would have to, you know, rebuild their flocks out of this. Um, we don't have a. I don't think we were given a number they had in their flocks at the time, but this is no small amount, really. Um, and I just think it's a a good picture for us. Um, it's y y the burn burn offering is many times in scripture uh, talked about a sweet aroma to the Lord, and I think this may be con this is conjecture put it that way, but I th the burnt offering is is an offering of atonement. That you know you've heard the term at at one mint right. So getting your this is a getting your relationship right with the Lord. I've sinned. This this burnt offering in that time was a covering of that sin, a a, a um, propitiation. The sin was the the wrath of God was propitiated on that sin. So now we're at one with God, and that's a sweet aroma. I think that's what that sweet aroma is. If one of you guys know if there's you've had a scriptural thing that's specific to that, but I think what is that sweet aroma to God is that he's at one with his people again, that, that his people, I should say it the other way, his people are at one with him again, that there is nothing between them again. You know how sin tends to separate. And so when we're sinning against God, when we're sinning against your, your parents, when you're sinning against somebody, there becomes a separation there. Just not, that's just what sin does. It separates, and the same thing with God. And so that separation is gone for a time, and it's a sweet aroma to the Lord. And I think, um, so I just think of, uh, of just when we come out of a difficult time, uh, it, it's important that we, again, sacrifice and, and recognize and worship the Lord so that we are then brought 
brought near him. Our, our atonement is done. Our atonement's been done, right? As, as we've put faith in Jesus, that atonement was done, completed forever. So we're always at one with the Father. So he gets to, if you think about that, we're, we, we are always, again, this is conjecture, but, but I, I believe it to be tr- true. We are always a sweet aroma to him. Our relationship is always a sweet aroma to him because of Jesus, because of what Jesus did finally. Yes, we still mess up. Yes, I still stink in a lot of ways. But <laughs> thanks to Jesus, he transforms that stink into a sweet aroma to our Father. Verse 36. Verse 36. And they delivered the king's orders to the king's satraps, the governors, and the region beyond the river. So they gave support to the people in the house of God. And the orders, I believe, he is probably delivering were 7, 25, and 23. And you, Ezra, according to your God-given wisdom, set magistrates and judges who may judge all the people who are in the region beyond the river, all, all such as know the laws of your God and teach those who do not know them. Whoever will not observe the law of your God and the law of the king let judgment be ex- executed speedily on him whether it be death or banishment or confiscation of goods or imprisonment I think he probably he went and delivered hey I've been set up as having this position of authority see my letter from the king and so he delivered those <sighs> mission complete and starting a new mission they were ultimately sent there to help beautify the temple, right? To help re- continue the rebuild, to continue to, to build God, God's house in his time. Um, and I just want to, wanted a, a reminder, I guess, about the finished work of, of Christ. That uh, John 19.30, So when Jesus had received sour wine, he said, it is finished, and bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. That it, that it is finished, to die is a, um, like an accounting term, like done, off the books, right? This, we, we have com- the payment paid in full. We've, we're done with this. And so that there was no more burnt offerings needed. We're just constantly um, in right standing with God not because we're not still sinning but because Jesus has done the work and so I just offer you know I believe I know everybody in here is walking with the Lord but if there's any who aren't who any who are uh, haven't given their heart fully to Jesus have not they don't know for sure that God's made them perfect it's and that's something to be celebrated, not because you can pat yourself on the back, because Jesus did it. Oh, we're perfect. Perfect. In our Father's eyes. Not here, but man. That's a, that's a good thing when you sit there and think about it, that God's not looking at you then. oh my gosh, are you serious? He's doing that again? How many times is he going to say, I'm sorry for that same sin? How many times is he going to ask forgiveness for that same sin? He's not. He's like, man, he's forgiven. That, that, that guy is perfect. Is that not good? Is God not good? Whew. Let's pray. Father, you are good. You are so good. We thank you, Lord, uh, for sending Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, that you willingly came, a free will offering. You laid down your life for us freely. Nobody could have taken it from you if you didn't lay it down freely. I thank you for that. Lord, help us, God, to take uh, that truth of your free gift of salvation, Lord, that you've set us apart to deliver to others. Lord, help us to uh, take that and 
Uh, Lord, hold it with honor, not as a burden. Help us, Lord, to be good stewards of that. Not just keeping it for ourselves, but delivering. Lord, I thank you for my brothers. I thank you, Lord, for this time. In Jesus' name, amen.